you're watching Drive the Lightning, the positively charged EV channel. Are the solar cells on Aptera going to be tuned to absorb light in a specific wavelength range? Yeah, so the, the cells we're using are specifically, one of the reasons we picked them is because they can absorb light in a wider range than a lot of other cells on the market. So what we've done with our material selection is try to kind of tune it to absorb and use as much of that light as possible. Um, which is why th we, don't, we don't recommend putting things like like, you, like wax, like you'd put on a normal car, wax on the solar panels. Those generally have UV blocking additives in there. What that can do is decrease some of the light transmission from the UV spectrum under around 400 nanometers. What, so, what color of light is that? Um, it's UV. <laughs> it's, it's not in the visible. I can't. It's, it's not in the visible wavelength. It's in the ultraviolet range. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So there, there's some light. Most of the light we get from the sun is in the visible light spectrum, which is why your eyes have tuned right. to kind of see it. But there is some stuff outside of the visible light And how light much spectrum. efficiency will the solar array lose on a cloudy day? Oh, that's a very complex. Yeah. <laughs> a, depends, right? It depends, yeah. So a lot of our, because of our geometry, sometimes if you have, um, you have direct light and you have diffuse light that you generally get from the sun. So there's kind of a, there are some conditions where a small amount of diffuse light sometimes can be better for the power you lose because of the curvature of the panels. But generally that means a drop in the total amount of light. So it, it really just depends on the, the Depends on the, where the car is facing in the particular mm -hmm. conditions. Yeah, so generally if you face the car, um, generally most solar panels kind of face the equator a little bit because that's, um, you're trying to get it as close to pointing directly at the sun as you can. Mm -hmm. um, for like stationary panels and things like that. But um, for us, it, you know, there's going to be a lot of things about, oh, should I park facing north? Should I park facing south? Uh, depending on where you live and shadows and things like that. So generally you're going to get most of our, our large portion of our, our powers from the hatch and the roof. So generally we recommend that the hatch and roof be facing towards wherever the sun is in your area. In the northern hemisphere, that's generally so you're going to point facing north. Is there any plans to have software that'll tell you yeah. how to optimize yeah. where to, what direction oh to park? There, there are plans for that. It's not currently in development. We're just trying to launch right now. Yeah. But that's all something we can do. Be like, hey, you should park on this side of your building. Or like, yes. hey, we noticed you got some shade during this part of the day. So that's not going to be in the launch product or whatever. That's a, that's a long-term goal. But there's, there's definitely a lot of headroom for cool things like that. And the software will tell you how much uh, solar power you're producing on a given day or a given time frame? Uh, yeah, I, th I think that's all in there. Yeah. As of now. Just, the, the, just those like recommendation features aren't in there. So. Okay. And like the UI and Anything else like you'd like to add about the solar system? I'm positively charged. <laughs>